Hello, hello, and welcome to part two of this week's Factorio K2SE update video on the Lawrence Plays channel. And we've um, seen some big improvements to the supplies of these little green bottle things, so we'll be taking a look at that. However, first, we need to take a look at the Immersite, because they're kind of linked. Last week, I talked about how the Immersite production was severely limited by the rate we were able to bring these the rare metals over from, uh, from Norvis at. And so, as you can see, at the moment, we've got an absolutely full spaceship over here. It's, 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 it's still in the process of unloading, but it's managed to refill with everything it needs. And you can tell that at a glance, because there's no filters set on any of these inserters along here. If there was a shortage of um, any, any of the materials in here, then you'd see, then you'd see a, for example, a rare metal icon appearing on the inserters. So all of this that's flowing through at the moment is just stocking up for the next spaceship that's going to come so that can load up nice and quickly so this implies that we've got to the point where we now have enough rare metals coming through and now it's just a, a case of how quickly can we unload all of this stuff that comes with it as usual that's being somewhat slowed down by the sand because sand comes out in enormous quantities we've got 17,000 in that in the, each of these in these warehouses um, okay and now we finally finally got rid of it all now there's still a load left in here there's an enormous quantity of sand being brought over from Taras which we're then sort of passing through we're, we're dumping down onto the planet and we're going to turn it into things like you know glass and silicon and other sort of products like that so it's not going to be wasted and we do use it all but it's a, it's a bit of a pain to ship it around because it's it's not it's not that it's voluminous in the same way that the Naquim is it's that it's it's, it's because it's so packed so densely it takes a very very long time for the inserters to load it you can get a huge amount in each one of these warehouses and so it takes a while to unload that said if we look over here we can see that up here we have currently well there's 13,000 crystals in here plus another approximately none in here and another 1200 in here and a load more um, in these in these warehouses so at the moment we have loads of immersion crystal we've now got a load of um, immersion plate pouring out as well so that's going to make this look quite healthy we've got 15,000 up there smattering through there and then another Another maybe 20,000 almost stored in all the warehouses down here. So the Immersite problem does seem to be kind of fixed now. We have we have a decent amount of it available. And you'll remember that last time I noted that a lot of the, an enormous amount of the Immersion plate, no sorry, the Immersion crystals were coming over here and going into this station, which is now which has now gone red because we finally we finally got enough Immersion crystals or Immersite crystals I think they're called to keep the uh, the material science area happy. And that means that when the train comes up to here to fill up with with the Immersite, it can then just go straight back down to the ground and unload both crystals and plates down there. And so that means we're sort of we're at a point where we're we're still catching up, as you can tell by the fact that the train isn't here. We're still filling up the buffers around the, around the factory, but we have a decent healthy buffer over here now. And I think we're getting to the point where it's all going to be topped off fairly soon. I do still need to keep an eye on it, of course, as is always the way. But it's going very very well. And so moving back a step, the reason it's going well is because we now have enough rare metal coming through. And the reason we have enough rare metals coming through is because we've got this now dedicated rare metal drop station over here. So instead of having to bring the rare metals up on a shared train over here that's also bringing up glass and plastic and who knows who knows what else, all of these things, they're now being brought up by a dedicated train, which means every time the train comes up, it brings up a phenomenal amount of it that it can unload into the warehouse over here. And you can see this warehouse is nearly full. I wouldn't be surprised if the train comes back up again fairly soon. And one of the things I've done slightly differently here is that instead of having the rare metals coming up from a station down here with all the rest of the spaceport related stuff now instead I've got an additional station over here in the secondary elevator area where we're now bringing over well there is a train a train does come in and drops off rare metal up here which then comes down uh, this belt goes into this station here so we've got there you go there's the rare metal train departing again already and we've got uh, we've got 357 stacks in there that's not bad 35,000 uh, we do need we do need to get more trains coming in here dropping off more rare metals. I have a, a concern that we might be absolutely hammering the rare metal supply which, which comes from over here. Uh, no that said, no we've got, uh, we've got absolute, we're absolutely full over here. We've got uh, we've made enough rare metals. All of this is full. It's slow. It's gone to the point where the, uh, the the system has stopped running because we've got so much rare metal. So we're clearly absolutely fine there. It's just we're just waiting for the it's, it's just the train throughput rate I guess. And if we see now yeah now a train has just pulled in and is unloading some rare metals to pass down to here to this warehouse. This warehouse is as you can see two thirds full so I'm not worried about the throughput rate here. I think this train is absolutely fine bringing all of the rare metals over and we are bringing them over faster than they're being taken away. So 
yeah, it, it's working nicely. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the system. There's just a bit of filling up of buffers to be done over here. With this station, I basically told it to call for another train by setting the uh, setting the the, um, the train limit on the station whenever the this warehouse is completely empty. So it alone, so we won't have too much stockpiled over here. We'll we'll fill this one up completely, and then it'll back up along the belts, and then this warehouse acts as a buffer to make sure that the train is able to unload everything it's got and then clear off again. Um, but if there's anything in here, we won't be calling for another train to come over. So at the moment because it's unloading and passing it through here, as you can see there's um, almost 3,000 in there, that means that the train limit has been set to zero. So we're not going to call for a second. We're not, we're not going to call for another train as soon as this one leaves, however it will fairly quickly drain back out into this warehouse and then we'll call for another one. So I think this is keeping the system nice and, nice and, nice and well supplied. I have noticed that this one down here is not doing so well. What are you? You are Vita Spares. Okay, I think that one is just a sort of a, a top-up train. So it's when we have any anything that we want to get rid of and send back up into orbit, we can do it with this train. But it's only, but it's not one that's supposed to be there bringing plenty of plentiful supplies up. It's only needed to deal with waste products. Similarly, this one's an unloader. This one's an unloader. This one's an unloader. Everything around here looks fine. So this is the sort of the first step towards what we're trying to do now, where we use, where we're, we're sort of trying to use the primary elevator over here for all of our mixed trains. So over here we've got all these various different varieties of all kinds of stuff going in. So this one's got all kinds of different Holmium products, for example. This one's got a mixture of things that are required for making deep space science, and so on and so on for all of them. Whereas over on the other side, we're going to have all the trains that are just taking up pure one item. So we're going to have just the rare metals over here. Now we've already broken that one because previously I made this, this sulfur train here which is just pulling sulfur through through this system over here and that should be, that ideally would not be going from here. So we should probably move this one over to working off the secondary elevator and have another just sulfur drop station over there just to, you know, to keep things a bit neater. But the rest of them I think are all, are all they're decently mixed trains. Not sure what's going on here. This one isn't doing anything at all. Uh, bio pickup. Apparently, we don't actually need anything for biological science from the ground, so uh, so it's just not doing anything. That's fair enough, I suppose. And so I set up the bottom part of this, and I should probably and I should give credit where it's due. Mark added in a couple of extra stations up here, with this one down here for the rare metals, and I think this one is earmarked for glass later. But I'll talk about why that one is is there, and just debate whether we actually need it in a few minutes. Over on Taras, I configured the uh, the train here that goes from Taras ground up into Tar orbit to have us to um to, to go up there if we have the sort of the, the rare metal problems. So in this case, we've got, we're reading the amount of rare metals that's on the ground and and sending it up to space with this transmitter, and this is allowing us to send it off to Norbit to say how much rare metal we need to be brought over in the next spaceship that comes. And so we need to have that transmitter there. We've also got another similar transmitter up in uh, Tar orbit, which is reading what's stored up in these warehouses and sending that off on the same signal as well. I'm then taking the signal for everything that's stored in these warehouses passing it and passing it down here where I can then say if it's zero then I want to pass it over one blip and then here I'm bringing over the signal. This is the same signal that's being transmitted by this transmitter and also by its partner up in space. So we're receiving that here. So this one is receiving what's on the ground and what's in space feeding it over to here and we're then asking if that's greater than minus 60,000 because we've got a shopping list attached to this signal as well. So it's the amount down here, the amount up in space, and the and subtracted the amount in the shopping list. So if this signal is greater than 60,000, that means there is some rare metal either on the ground or in space or both. So combine that with this one, which is saying if there's none on the ground, we know that if both of these go high, if both these trigger and output their blip, then we know that there is some on the ground or in space, but that, and also there is none on the ground, and therefore we know that there must be some in space. So we're taking both those signals, if we get a 2 there, then we're outputting a blip from here which is passed over to the station, and this train here is watching to see if it gets a blip, then it will depart. The blips can also be set by watching these belts across here, and if we see that all of the belts are full, then it means the train is full, so we'll send it up to space to go and deliver all of the, all the stuff it's carrying. So this means we're watching for the blips, and so if the train is either full, or if there's me uh, rare metals in space and none on the ground, then the train will just depart and go up and go and get some more rare metals or unload, or probably both. And that means we can ensure that we have a nice healthy uh, stream of all of the things we need to send up going upstream, and also bring we're bringing down any rare metals whenever we have any sort of problems down here. Now at the moment we've got 22,000 rare metals down here in a warehouse, so we don't have a problem at the moment, but if we did, we'd, have, we'd be able to send the train off to deal with it. It's one of those things where we want to make sure the system doesn't get into an awkward position where it just locks up and and does and and and, uh, and won't re and won't recover automatically. So this should work quite nicely. 
Recently, Mark upgraded the Vitalic Reagent production, that's these uh, dark green bottles over here, because, well, basically because we didn't have enough, simple as that. Um, and it turns out that making enormous quantities of Vitalic Reagent requires enormous quantities of glass, presumably to make the little bottles they're put in, which is uh, why I was complaining last week that you can't just transport the stuff around as a fluid, which would be much, much easier. But, you know, it turns out you can't do that. And so he's um, he's massively increased the amount of glass being brought over here. Um, as you can see, we've got a nice, full, he healthy full belts over here. There's 32,000 of it stored in this warehouse. Things are going well. In order to do that, well, he's got a nice healthy supply of it being passed up through the belt system into the big grid spaceship here. You can see there's uh, there's, there's quite a bit. There's about 7,500 of it in the uh, in the spaceship here, ready to be taken off over to big grid as, as to be used up. And we've got a couple of belts bringing it in over here. So this is this is working nicely. And we uh, we were talking about setting up this station down here to bring the glass up much faster, in much the same way we're doing here with the rare metals. However, once we took the huge quantity of rare metals that we require out of this train system, it turns out that when it's not needing to bring up thousands and thousands of rare metals, so I think that, that spaceship takes about 40,000 away with it each time it goes, when you're not trying to bring that stuff up, there's actually plenty of room in there for the glass. So you can see here, we've got 17,000 in this warehouse. And we're asking for 10,000, so it's, um, yeah, I'd say that's gone pretty well. We seem to have uh, more than we need at the moment. So, the, yeah, the train is now more than capable of keeping up with the demands uh, on, on the glass over here. So, we have this station available in case we need it. But it turns out, once you stop trying to transport enormous quantities of rare metal in, that, in the other train up here, the mixed train, it turns out there's actually plenty of room for all the glass. So, that's working really quite nicely, and we've got plenty of glass coming through and available. To improve this even further, he's also started taking all of the stone that's being produced from core mining out over, over this way, down these belts where it's being put in a warehouse and can then be turned into glass to just have a little bit of a top up. So we've got another 12,000 available here that's pouring up these belts and presumably is going to be, yes, here we go, is being used as a priority over the glass that's being brought over from Norvis. So I don't know whether this is actually going to be able to keep up with the demands. It's, it seems to be doing pretty well at the moment. As I say, there's 12,000 in here. Um, but just in case it can't, we've, got, we've now got an improved system and bringing it over from Norvis as well. This meant that we got to the position where the Vitalic reagent was massively backed up all the way along um, this belt. Okay, it's not now, but it was at the time the notes were made. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't being taken over to Norvis in sufficiently large quantities, and we seem to have lost out on a bit of it because there is it's set somewhere in one, one of these things. Um, yeah, here we go. If it's less than 50,000, it's passed through, and the memory cell system that's remembering how much we have um, was a little bit out. We, were, we had about 13,000 in a spaceship, none in Norbit, and it wasn't passing any more through. So the numbers must have been... I, we're not quite sure why it's gone wrong, whether it's a few have been lost from being passed back and forth by the spaceship inserters, or whether it's that um, some have been taken out of the system by someone who has been naughty and not logged it properly. We don't really know. Um, I'm pretty sure I haven't been naughty because I've set up, I've set up a system that is, is, is still working. But anyway, there, there was some sort of problem with it, so we were, it wasn't getting shipped through. So Mark has increased the number over here on, on here to make sure we do get a decent amount through. And as you can see, that's causing it to flow through nicely. Now, it's not it's no longer backed up all the way along, and if we look over here, we can see that, well, the machines are kind of running, um, but it seems that the, the, the shortage at the moment is with the um, Vitalic, what are you, Vitalic Extract? Vitamalange Extract, there we go. Uh, a load of it's flowing up here, and it is being made into reagents, so we do have some of it coming through, um, but also a lot of it is being taken out down the belts over here to be made into the Vitalic Acid, which is also being used up. And I suspect it's not a coincidence that these two are the things that are used in quite large quantities by the Naquium processing. So I suspect we're absolutely ripping through all of the Vita products just to do all of the to, just to make all of the Naquium that we're using for all the deep space science. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but well, we we need the Naquium, so therefore we need the the, uh, the the reagent and the acid, and therefore we need a huge amount of the extract. Um, there's not really much we can do about that apart from perhaps increase the amount of extract we have being produced. But then this warehouse down here is virtually empty, so to get this running to, to get this to run fast. No. To get this one to run faster would mean we need to get this running faster, which means we need to have more of this, which means we need to do a lot more Vitamelange mining, and, well, we've already got a huge area taken up by Vita Processing. So, I guess we... Well, we can we can let it run. See if see if we have see if we actually do have a problem, or whether it's just a bit of buffer refilling. And we can take a look at the production graph as usual and see that we're producing 873 per minute and using 509 per minute over the last hour. So to be honest, I think that's probably okay. I don't know why the production has been being a bit spiky like this. I suspect this is the sort of the steady state. Oh, this is probably the steady state when we're not making acid, and this is probably the steady state when we are making acid. 
But unfortunately, I can't add that to this graph as it's a fluid, so I can't tell exactly where the uh, the lines are drawn. But I suspect that that's what's going on here. This was the rate it was making it at when we didn't need to make the acid, and now we are making acid. It's been split between the two of them. So hopefully we'll catch up on the acid production soon. It'll go back up to this rate. But it doesn't matter a huge amount because we do seem to be producing it quite a bit faster than we're consuming it, and that's what matters. All of this production expansion has come at it, has come at the cost of using rather a lot more power. Um, as you can see, it's gone from sort of down here to some pretty big spikes up here, mostly due to all of the electrolysis plants, because they're they are hungry, hungry here um, systems. And so to get round that, Marcus put more solar, more more solar in uh, big orbit as well. Um, this is now expanded by I don't know how much, but it has been expanded. We've now got plenty of solar power generation. Uh, I say plenty. We've got. Uh, yeah, we've got to about twice the amount of power available that we need. So yes, this is going very nicely. It's just it's just copy paste and expand it out a load and, and bring over a load more solar panels. Not exactly difficult, but it needs to be done every so often. Next up, we have more good news. The iridium production is seems to finally actually be stable and working really, really nicely. As you can see here, we've got nice healthy streams of blast cake going out here, going over to be turned into the ingots. All of these machines are running. Uh, they're, they're, they're running reasonably solidly anyway. Um, there's decent amounts of uh, crushed ore coming in from both sides over here. Everything seems to be ticking over quite nicely. And Mike says that this is because he's put in some more hydrogen chloride production. Is that this one down here? Uh, yes. So I think that's this bar across here. Now he's not He's not finished off his uh, beacon over here. However, it seems we don't really need that. We now have sufficient, I guess. Um, this tank looks quite empty, so I think it'd be a good idea to get that beacon up and beaconing properly. Uh, but it does seem to be enough to keep all the machines running. What are you, what, what are you short of? Yeah, over here you can see the problem is how quickly we can take the iridium powder away rather than how quickly we can bring the acid in, which is a massive improvement over uh, over previous problems. So that's that's working really, really nicely. And once again, if we look at the production graph over the last hour, you can see that iridium is being made 813 per minute and used at 746. That's a really good sign. We are clearly now bringing it in faster than we're able to use it up. Yes, we're getting some spikes in here as, as, as demand happens, but basically we've got a nice steady production and, an, and occasional spikes in the consumption but the overall average is, is, is notably lower on this side than it is on the other side. I suspect that over on Norvis, whilst we filled up all of the uh, intermediates over here, so we've got full heavy assemblies, uh, bearings, heavy composites and girders, they, these have all stopped. This is all very, very happy. We probably still haven't quite filled up the down station over here. No, this, this warehouse is empty. The train over here is not full and we don't have a train dropping any off over here. However, this shows that we're probably almost certainly now at a stage of filling up buffers rather than frenziedly trying to produce it and using every little bit as soon as it arrives. So there's none down here in this warehouse and therefore there's none in the warehouse up in orbit. However, there is plenty over in the intermediates area and if we tell this train to clear off now, will it go? No, it doesn't need to go anywhere, the destination is full. So whilst it doesn't have enough here for it to actually leave, there isn't anywhere that's actually calling for it at the moment, so we, aren't, we don't have any problems here. After a lot of hard work and a lot of sort of topping things up and just scaling up very gradually over time, Mike has finally reached a point where we do have, we actually have enough iridium. So well done there, that's very impressive given how, uh, how difficult the iridium recipe is and how long it's taken to get there. So that's, that's really good. We now have sufficient iridium, which is very satisfying. It's not showing up on the uh, on, on the graph over here yet, but as I say, that's just because we're filling up the buffers. Now that now that we've got almost enough on the ground, next time a spaceship comes in with a load, well, we, we'll top top it up on the ground, and then maybe we'll get a little bit in here, and then after the next spaceship, we'll get a bit more, and then maybe maybe in three spaceships' time, who knows? I'm making the numbers up. Then maybe we'll have a nice solid full green bar over here, and everything will be fantastic. Interestingly, we seem to be a bit short of um, imosite crystals, despite the the, uh, the sheer amount that we just noticed up in space. I wonder if that's broken. No, it's not broken. We have somehow managed to rip through all of those imosite crystals we saw beforehand. Uh, that does explain why we saw lots of them being loaded in a frenzy onto the train over on um, Taras. But uh, yeah, that's that's worrying. It's gone from looking really quite healthy to just empty in the time it's taken me to record. I don't know about twenty minutes of video. The other big shortage you see over here, ignoring the Naquium, because that's uh, kind of, it feels like a special case, you, we're never going to have enough of that probably, is the Aholmium over here. And Tristan's been doing a bit of work on that, some of it in, in, in the game and some of it behind the scenes. 
Previously, the Holmium production was struggling because we had too much dirty Holmium water. This tank was completely full. All of the uh, machines down here were sad because they couldn't get rid of the dirty Holmium water as quickly as they needed to. And the reason this was pro having trouble was because this belt was completely full. We didn't have enough capacity on the belt. And it turns out that was mostly because we were only using one side of it. So now that it's been upgraded to use both sides of the belt, it's cleared out the, uh, the backlog and we now have plenty, plenty of uh, processing available for the dirty Holmium water. And then down here it's all being filtered out and passed through back to where it needs to go and just the, the system is now working nicely basically is what I'm trying to say. It also apparently backed up because we weren't taking away the crushed holmium fast enough so that's being passed through along here. Tristan seems to be measuring, oh I see, he's measuring it all the way along here and if they, if this presumably if this fills up completely then it stops all these belts across here so yes if there's less than 112 on all of these belts then these belts over here can run. If not, then we'll try and just run the entire factory off this one until we clear it all out, and then this can kick back in again. Now, in theory, this shouldn't kick in for very long or even very often because there isn't all that much coming out here. So if this does have to kick in, something has gone a bit wrong, but it does mean that cutting it off here just means that we can make sure that we pull it through from here, we clean out all of the hot crushed holmium out of these machines and just get the system up and running again. Now he's only putting it onto one belt along here, but that shouldn't matter. It's only, as long as these machines along here can deal with it, get rid of it, it should be okay. Additionally, he says he's put in another stone mine. Uh, let me set down here, no, that's holmanite. Uh, that's copper. <laughs> Somewhere there is a there is apparently a stone mine that is be that is bringing in additional uh, stone that's required for making all the hydrogen chloride. Uh, maybe it's coming in by train and therefore I can't see it. It's probably somewhere. Uh, and that's yes, so that's bringing in a lot more stone in order in order to allow him to make enough hydrogen chloride along here because that's required as one in one of the processing steps. This problem also meant that he's short of sand down. Oh yeah, here we go. Here's a stone station. Stone stone is being dropped off here, so that answers that one. It also meant he was short on sand for the final step. Yes, over here. Maybe making the actual holmium ingots where you need to mix in the holmium or the, the holmium the liquid holmium with some sand in order to make the ingots so that was causing problems as well but now there's a good supply healthy supply of stone that's working quite nicely and if we look at the holmium supply now over the last hour you can see that's that's pretty steady there's a there's a bit of a blip here don't know what caused that but there is, but it's mostly pretty steady however you'll notice over here it's being produced at 399 per minute but used at 473 per minute which is obviously not going to work for very long so we're going to have we're going to have some problems there we we do need a big expansion of the holmium production however fortunately Tristan is currently working on this i believe he's made a giant blueprint somewhere in the blueprint editor and is now just waiting for all the bits and pieces he needs for that to be to be all accumulate together on his spaceship and that's being held up a little bit by the rate the productivity module 6s are being produced at so those are being made and then brought over here however he's requesting 250 of them and currently has 172 so you know there's a bit a bit a few more need to be made before that'll actually start working. Uh, I wonder if that's being limited by anything in particular over here. So if we look at the productivity module production, uh, yeah, okay, so this is another Vitalic reagent sink by the looks of it, and that seems to be the problem. We've got the extract here and the bio scrubbers, but then we've not got any reagent coming through here, and that's stopping the production of these tier 6 modules. So <laughs> everything seems to, so maybe that's where all of that reagent has been going. Uh, it seems that we have a massive, massive need for, for Vitalic reagent here and for the Naquium, and we just aren't able to keep up with it at the moment. But hopefully, uh, with the improvement that Mark has been making will be able to get that up and flowing and just everything will then just start to work nicely. But it does show how interlinked everything is. So because we were trying to make the inner site and we needed an enormous amount of rare metal for that, that was causing problems with the glass uh, transportation. So we fixed that so we could get enough glass to make the uh, Vitalic reagent. And now that Vitalic reagent is needed in absolutely enormous quantities, but because we, we, uh, we need, we're using a certain amount of the Vitalic acid as well, that's causing problems to that one. And so that means that because we don't have enough um, Vitalic reagent, we're not able to make enough productivity modules. And because we don't have enough productivity modules, we're not able to build the improved Holmium production system. Them. And so, and uh, so, in a way, the lack of holmium is down to the imersite struggles we were having in previously. Uh, it's not quite that simple, of course, but it uh, it does sort of feel that way, a little bit that way at sometimes. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to be a loop. Fortunately, we're not having dif difficulties with the vitalic reagent production because we don't have enough holmium cable or something like that. That would be really awkward because it would then, yes, a complete loop where you just need to solve everything at the same time. And um, you know, oh dear, that's always difficult. But this does mean once things start to flow a little bit, and once Tristan's managed to get all the bits and pieces he needs into his spaceship. He can then head back over to Njord and then build up a new and improved Holmium production facility over there. And, well, at least that'll solve one of our problems. <laughs> 
And while we're messing around with all of the things I've been discussing in the last uh, sort of video or two, Tristan's been going around and sort of, you know, fixing some of the things that were broken here and there. So we had the Andragon train that was parked here and, and not going. For some reason it was in manual mode. I don't know why. He's fixed that. So now it's taking the uh, the waste products from Andragon away, which means we now have, we're now able to unload the stone and we now have a nice healthy supply of stone passing through here. And for some reason there is a very lot, there are quite a few rather lost looking construction bots sitting inside this spaceship. He's also fixed the problem over in uh, science where the significant data was being, put, had been put onto, a little bit of it had been put onto the, uh, the blank data cards belt, I think because someone, probably me, had screwed up around here. I think, I think I'd put in a, um, a requester chest here and was just dumping them onto this belt instead of what Tristan's now done, which is putting a requester chest in over here. So any significant data cards that end up in the logistics system will be dropped off here, put onto this belt, which gives them priority, which is nice, and they will then just flow through here and go, go through the system as, is the, as they're supposed to and just be dealt with in a sensible way. On the ground, we had some problems with the, all the downstream stuff. I think Tristan says he's put in an additional belt to, to manage all of the, um, the supplies that are coming through. I think that's probably this one here. So now we've got an extra 25% on top of what we had before, uh, pulling more, 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 more everything out of here to pass it over to this warehouse, where it can then be passed on up all of these belts to be, to be dealt with appropriately. And over here, we seem to have rather a lot of sand, but it is pouring out on two solid belts of it over here. Maybe we need yet another sand belt. In fact, that looks like what this one's for. I don't know why that's not running program that and flip it round and there we go we can, we can pour the sand through it a little bit quicker and help help deplete it from in here there's also a lot of stone in there uh, that's only coming out down along this belt i think this is going to need to be monitored because at the moment we do seem to have too much stuff in this warehouse and the stone appears to be the worst offender there so maybe this belt needs to be upgraded to purple i think purple's faster than green uh, and just to take it away all the way up up here where it'll go into this into the train system up here to be taken away to be for, for various stone related purposes he noticed that the Holmium cable throughput down here was insufficient, or rather that the warehouse here was emptying before another train would come along to fill it back up again. So he's increased the amount we're requesting down here now. So, so if you have a look at this that down here in the station, we're now at triggering whenever there's less than 6,000 uh, Holmium cables in the in, in the warehouse. Uh, there's currently about 9,000, so it seems to be working as of right now. But you can see that there is a steady pouring out of on the purple belt of a steady stream of Holmium cables. There are so many things that use these up that, well, we just... We get through crazy amounts of it, and it's all being—it's all pouring from here over into the uh, into the trains that will take it up into orbit for all the various different types of science and production and so on that require it up there. So at the moment, you can see yes, this one's running flat out, loading this train up with holmium cables, and this one over here similarly. So they're pouring through into these two trains to be taken up, and and that is what the system is for. That is why we have all of these resources available. But it is a little bit disturbing when you can, when you see the belt the, the, when you see one of your systems just unloading as fast as it possibly can. It makes me wonder if maybe this. Should be a little bit faster but then if it's faster then we're going to need to bring the trains in quicker and oh I don't know it's all going to be absolutely horrible. I haven't noticed any crises up in orbit yet with Holmium cables but that might just be because I've not been looking in the right place maybe we'll spot some next time. He also noticed that we're struggling with solar panels and this is probably due to certain people going out and placing them in their 5000s in various places which I, to be honest, I'm not going to knock because we do need them but it did mean we we're running out of them and that was apparently a supply issue which Tristan traced back down here where we weren't making these advanced solar panels fast enough. And apparently that was because we weren't making nitric acid fast enough over here. So he's gone and he's put in some additional machines over here to make the nitric acid a bit faster. As you can see, we've now got a completely full pipe coming out here, but not going anywhere. We've also got quite a lot in this pipe up here that does go somewhere. It's not full, but it's also, but it is reasonably healthy. Now, I wonder a little bit why we don't have all of these linked up. Uh, just to make sure we're pumping it through a bit faster here, especially as half these machines aren't working. Yeah, I think it, it would be a good idea to um, do this down to here and link that across to there and ideally to this one as well but there's a belt in the way up here so we'll probably probably fit that one in as well but this would at least double it and we, we could triple it with the machines that are in here already um, looking along here though however the hydrogen production seems to be the limiting factor here so that actually won't help very much we would need to put in a lot more electrolysis plants to produce a lot more hydrogen a lot more quickly and then to, ca to carry on pumping that through to make the nitric acid so yeah, it doesn't actually matter that we don't have those pipes linked up properly because this is the limiting factor. So we may need to top that up, especially because, as I said, half the machines at the top here aren't working. So we could do with a bit more throughput there. I think Tristan is probably aware of most of this. Uh, I think a lot of his upgrades have just been through using the um, putting in productivity modules along here. So here you can see, yes, we're bringing in, we're using productivity modules here because the, even with the prod mods, there still isn't enough um, ammonia coming in to keep that running flat out. So maybe we need 
So now we've got productivity, quite a lot of productivity modules in along here, and, we're, and it's the hydrogen we're short of. I suppose we could upgrade the modules in all of these electrolysis plants to tier 3, or maybe even tier 4, just to get it coming out a bit quicker. But also more plants would also help quite a bit. There's lots of different ways we could fix it. Finally, he's also landfilled this lake, uh, not because we need, not because we particularly need the uh, the extra space or anything like that, or even need, don't like this lake, but just because the warehouses over here were kind of starting to fill up. So he's emptied them all out by building, by just filling up a lake, basically, which is, uh, I suppose, one way to get rid of, of of waste products, although not one that I would like to use in the real world. And now moving on to the research. We have done very little research this time because stuff's getting expensive. <laughs> we did we did a, a long range star mapping, number 15, which is why this one is now 16. So that's found us another um, pattern of stars out in the sky to use in, in puzzles and things like that. And we've also done a load of um, work on teleportation. So as you can see, this one is currently at percent done. Uh, it's, it's coming along quite nicely, but it requires a lot of the energy for science. And that's the one we're struggling with. So, and it requires 10 thousand in total so it's taking a while to do that one and it's struggling a bit but you know it every almost all the good researchers require energy for at this point which is why Tristan is working so hard on the Holmium um, but hopefully we'll soon get that one up and running and then we can move on to other things besides as well so we we can work on the Arcalink storage and the singularity reactors and then maybe do some mining productivity as well because why not that's always fun so that brings us to the end of the episode thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed it please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all the stuff that's coming out next week for example on Monday we shall be back to carry on with the stream where we shall be going off and uh, trying to solve the problems I've been talking about uh, in these last couple of videos so maybe I'll um, go around beating the Naquium a little bit more Tristan's going to look into the Holmium of course uh, Mike's probably going to go off and um, poke some more pyramids because that's that's always fun and we shall see what else we need to get done then on Wednesday I'll be back for some more satisfactory things are going things are going there I think they're going pretty well last week I had the um, in intention of building up a nuclear power plant I got as far as mining the uranium because there were some spider related issues that made things a little bit more difficult than I was expecting so uh, hopefully next week I'll be able to get the uranium um, up and running and producing power uh, but we shall see there's a couple of other things I want to do sort of in parallel with that which is going to make it take a little bit longer so um, yeah we shall see how long that takes and so, that is the end. As I said, please make sure you're subscribed so you didn't miss out on anything, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.